Charlie, just how significant is a, a morning like this for, for offering, well, classic clues on the track here at Epsom? No, it's, 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 very, uh, it's a very useful uh, you know, experience for us to be able to use and you have know, to thank the Jockey Club and, and, and Epsom uh, for you know, putting it on for us. Um, as respects to uh, you know, what we feel we have achieved this morning is, is just sort of the experience of walking around the paddock uh, as much as anything. You know, the, the three horses we galloped this morning, they all gave them a, a swinging canter, should I say, is uh, you know Nahani, who's obviously got track experience anyway, winning the the trial here. Um, but Walker Stars came here, and you know he's a horse that uh, he challenges himself mentally uh, as much as he challenges us. Uh, so uh, you know it was we were very keen to bring him here this morning for just like I say for, for the experience of walking around the paddock and, and taking it all in, as it can be quite daunting when you mm. go out on the downs there. And it's something you've used before. I remember speaking to you before Adi R1 this time last year. So. I suppose all tracks are unique, but but this one may be slightly more unique given the idiosyncrasies of, of, of the camber, the ups, the downs, the, the constant turning that's part of the track. Yeah, very much so. I mean, look, to be brutally honest, we, we don't really get enough speed up there to challenge yeah. them too much, challenge them, should I say, sorry, too much uh, with the uh, the undulations, but it's still, it's a good experience. Uh, and But um, we've used it mainly this morning. More importantly, it's just the whole paddock experience and, and, and taking that all in. So you, you mentioned Nahani um, and Walker Stars as well. How many at this stage do you think you might run in the derby? As you know, those pair have uh, been entered from day one and um, you know they've been, they were left in. We uh, obviously took a few horses out there at the last stage. Mm. Um, Walker, uh, um, sorry, Nations Pride has obviously been on a lot of people's uh, lips of, of, of what we're going to be doing with him, are we supplementing, are we not supplementing. Um, he's in the French derby, but most importantly, he's going to work on Wednesday and then a decision will be made after that work, you know, probably Thursday once we've seen him come out of the work, is whether we take in uh, to strong consideration of supplementing him on the, on the Monday. Was he one of the horses that, by very nature, hasn't been in the, the early entry stage, was one of those horses that just thrives and well, excels through life in Dubai earlier this year because we saw it when he won the, the Jumeirah derby, one of the new races? Yes, and, and you know he's a horse. That, as I say, he's, he won the Jamira Derby and won that well, and did it all the right way around. He came back to Newmarket, um, won the Newmarket Stakes very impressively, um, and the reason, sort of, being was we sort of felt we had a bit of a Derby picture, hopefully with a few of our horses, mm. and you know he, he he's not on pedigree. You could say well, it's going to be right to the end of his, you know, as respects to stamina, getting that mile and a half. It, it, it's going to be, like I said, it, Petrol Gage will be pretty much to the end. Um, so therefore, you know, we felt that maybe he's more of a French derby horse. Um, but obviously with modern games doing what he did in, in, in the French guineas, he sort of, he's put himself bang in the, in the French derby picture. Um, so therefore it's allowed us to, again, to date, be able to talk about it because until Wednesday, when we you know, give him a nice piece of work there on Wednesday, hopefully, that uh, if he you know, gives us all the right signals that we can then hopefully be able to have the conversation that you know, we'll be supplementing on Monday. Um, and what after what Nahani did here in the, the trial, was it easy to put him away and think he didn't need to go for another one into the month of May? Yeah, because he's a horse that's obviously an unraced two-year-old there and he had, sort of, I felt, three quickish runs there when he, you know, he broke his maid and we backed him up into the, into the Leicester novice there and then he came here. So um, I'm not saying that I felt that he'd done enough, but I just felt he'd done enough in the shortest space of time. So I just wanted to give the horse a chance to be able to, to fill his frame. And, and I have to say, he's the one horse, as I mentioned to a lot of the press earlier, that uh, you know, as a physical, he's done the best out of all of them. Uh, he, of course, beat United Nations, who went on and won the, the Lingfield Derby trial, beating Walk of Stars. But, but based on last year and ADR, it wouldn't be beyond the realm's possibility for one of yours to be beaten in a trial, and specifically Lingfield, and go on and still win the big one. Be nice if we could follow that <laughs> <laughs> that trodden path. But anyway, as we know, it's not quite as simple as that. But uh, no, um, you know, like like all of these trials, they're there to for horses. They're still learning on the game. Um, you're, everyone's trying to get a little bit of a gauge of what sort of uh, caliber of horse they're dealing with. And um, I felt with Walker Stars, he's ticked a couple of boxes that uh, a he showed he has got an engine, and b you know he showed that we've still got a bit of work in progress to uh, as educating him to to channel it on his uh, energy in the right direction. And just because look, the Derby is the first Saturday in June and, and you, the three you've talked about have all come completely different routes, developed at different times, debuted at different times. Is, is it just still tricky to know exactly what you've got with all three of them at this stage? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's sort of tricky. No, I mean, I, I, I'm... No, no, Nahani is a horse that, as you say, you know, after winning the trial here, he was a, as 
mentioned there, was going always going to stop him and wait and yeah. come straight here because he's a horse that, as a physical, he he was doing. I felt he was a horse that had the scope to do the best, mm. and and he has. And in, in respects, he he's put a lot of condition on in in the right manner, strong you know strength and not on the belly there, <laughs> and uh, he's strengthened well. Um, Walker Stars is a horse as we've all we've muted there now. Um, he, he's a challenge to himself and us. Uh, has a huge engine there, there's no doubt about it. You can't get away from you know, what, what ability he's got there. And if we can just get that in the right direction, he's, he's the exciting horse. And just lastly, on the derby itself, you've won two of the last four. Um, with the classic successes that you had, England, France, Ireland in recent times, just, just how significant has the derby been in your career so far? Well, it was, you know, I think we'd, we could all say that you know, 2018 was... When Massar won was was the, the sort of, dare I say, the changing point in, in in my career, but more so importantly for for Godolphin and, and, and his Irish Shake Mohammed and Moulton Paddock. So you know, thankfully, we've managed to, which can sometimes be a hard sort of to follow on from a Derby success. Is it, we've managed to keep building from there, and um, so it's you know it's huge for myself there on a personal point. But uh, you know, t to get a horse here, it's like any classic or any Group One. You know, to get. To get the horses here is a challenge itself, and I always applaud all the lads in the yard, even if win, lose, or draw. Just to get a horse to the Derby, it's a great achievement, and um, most importantly, to try and win one, um, it's it's what every owner, breeder, trainer, jockey wants to do. So um, it's uh, it's an exciting race. Um, I, seriously impressive with the moonlight. I think a lot of people are. Is she a likely runner in the Oaks at this stage? Uh, yes, she is. Yeah, she worked well on Saturday. Very pleased with her. Um, you know, we didn't bring her here purposely, we just felt we didn't need to, but um, very pleased with her development since Newmarket and um, yes, we plan to is, is stamina a little bit of a question mark? Maybe, but you'd know the family quite well. The dam was very, very quick indeed, Dream Castles in the family. Does, does the Marlin 4 hold any worries for you? Uh, it does, um, but as, you know, with a filly like that, you could... William was confident that she you know, as confident as you can be, the only, after only ever going a mile and a quarter so far to date, that um, he felt that it's definitely worth having a crack at and it wouldn't be saying, no, she won't stay, that's for sure. Uh, John Gosden, this, this work morning here pre-Epsom each and every year, I think you've, you've always stressed the importance. Um, just how significant is it for a, a classic aspirant for you? Well, I think if they're highly experienced and they've raced a lot, it's not such an essential. But for me, uh, I brought horses here like Golden Horn and, uh, and you know, he had one run as a two-year-old and uh, Jack Hobbs and some others, you know, Jack Ruder. And I think to that extent, it's, it, it also will let you know whether the, the track is natural for them or not. You don't try and go in a work morning flat out racing pace, but you like to have a feel of it. And I'm interested in what the jockeys say afterwards, how they were changing their legs, how their balance was, because you, it's left-handed downhill with a camber shifting around. So to that extent, it is a demanding track on their agility and balance, let alone on the ability to hold a position and stay a mile and a half. So to that extent, it's nice to have a little dress rehearsal. Yes. And, you know, if, they're a little, if they have a little nervousness in their nature, it's good to come and see the place. So when they come back, they're conversant with the stable yard, conversant with the walker. You can't imitate the crowd, of course, and the noise. Uh, with that in mind, all that you said, what was your take on Emily Upjohn? What was Frankie de Tory's take? Uh, I was happy and he was, he was very happy. Um, he said she, she moved beautifully in behind, they didn't go quick. But uh, as they came down the hill and began to roll off the hill over the, the road crossing, mm. and then he was very pleased with her between the three and the one and a half, the way she picked up, he was delighted with that. She's come back, she's had a nice normal blow, and uh, she's now having a bite to eat before she goes home. She left before the rush hour at 4.30 in the morning, gets home after, you know, between the rush hour, so that's good. And I think it was a nice experience for her. Do you see her as the, the type that would, well, thrive, but enjoy the whole process of Oaks Day here? Yeah, I think to an extent. I mean, Oaks Day is quieter than uh, Derby Day, but it's still plenty of razzmatazz and the downs are filling up all the time. So to that extent, yeah, I'd, but it's nice and to come, have a feel of the track, learn a little bit about it. And, and I think when they're young and not very experienced, a little day out like this is good. When they're old seasoned campaigners, it's not necessary. I'm fascinated today because you're, you're three Oaks winners since 2014. They've come from Newmarket, Lingfield and, of course, Enable at Chester. This one's coming from York. It's no tried and tested path into the Oaks. Are they, 
Are there comparables with any of them at this stage? Well, it had slightly been my intention to run this filly at Newbury in the conditions race that I ran an Abel in and then go to Chester, because I feel Chester, you learn a lot around the bends of Chester. And I know it was Kieran Fallon who encouraged Aidan O'Brien when he was riding him to, to send horses to Chester. And since then, he's completely dominated, wiped us off the table. <laughs> and we can't even get, hardly get a winner there. Any of us uh, local UK trainers. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. <laughs> yes, thanks, Kieran. But look, it, it is a good education. I, I think for me, she would have gone that route. But unfortunately, I couldn't run her at Newbury. I had a tiny little hiccup. And so I was then forced to sand down where she sat second, drew away well, didn't know much, in the Musadora. We won the Musadora with a filly called The Few, who was outstanding and should have won the Oaks. But the less said about that, the better. Something nasty happened in the country, and I won't go into any detail. But uh, as you know, she was flying at the finish, and it was all over. But uh, to that extent, the Musadora is fine for me as well. I would have preferred to have gone to Chester and learned there, but I've come here today, and it's a compensation. I think if she'd gone around Chester, I wouldn't have come here today. Um, just quickly on her pedigree, she's by Sea the Stars, the Derby winner. Harzan's not too far away, another Derby winner. Did today and, and the balance she showed sort of rubber stamp what you thought she'd show, because hopefully she's bred for the task as well? Yes, but they can get in a muddle coming down that hill, you know. Mm. Get on the wrong leg and a relief hard. Freddie nearly wound up in the, in the fairground, you know. So to that extent, you, you want them to come and be comfortable on the track at the pace they're going, which isn't racing pace. Mm. And so to that extent, it's a nice little dress rehearsal. It's, it's a good idea, and it's far enough away from the race, and it's far enough from her run. Whereas the other filly that we may run in the Oaks, uh, Nashua, she only ran on Saturday. It's a bit close last Saturday, you know. Um, she, just on the topic of Nashua, she, she's got a lot of speed as well, hasn't she? She's got a coronation entry as well. Does that indicate what kind of a filly you think she is? Yeah, she's very fast, uh, got a great turn of foot, I, 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 and the mile and a quarter is obviously no problem. Yeah. I wouldn't know about the next two furlongs. That's going to be uncharted territory for her, and we'll run and we'll find out. But if she can go the mile and a half, then she's a formidable. If not, then you know you can come back and stay at a mile and a quarter. Which Derby winner or Oaks winner has given you the most satisfaction visually on the day that you can remember watching that really drew your breath away? Probably the whole Hollywood production of the thunderstorm with the navel. Yes. When the one filly got loose. The well, American bolted, filly. She bolted. She probably should have had a pony. And they, I think they didn't have a pony or they didn't permission. And Pellier slipped off her going flat out down the hill towards the stalls like a circus act, unbelievable, didn't hurt himself and the filly was fine. So that was a bit of a dramatic start. And they go in, going in the stalls and this thundercloud of gigantic proportions strikes, lightning, you think lightning's going to hit the gates, should they get them out the gates? And then they ran through, I mean, as dark and as heavy a rain as possible. And then enabled battling with that hugely talented filly of Aidens. And they went between the three and the, and the one, head to head. And I think that was, the whole thing was, you know, a Hollywood producer couldn't have had better effects. And I think that was a pretty tingling moment for anybody. John, wish you the best luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Rafe Beckett brought West over here to, to have a gallop this morning as part of the, well, as part of the, the event morning. Um, Rafe, is this your, your first time doing this morning and engaging one of your Epsom horses? It is. Uh, none of our previous campaigners came for various reasons. Uh, I never felt that um, they needed it for one reason or another. Some of them had been to Lingfield. Some of them were, um, I felt, would cope well enough without coming here. And of course, most of them were fillies as well. Mm. All bar one was a filly. So um, uh, fillies take it slightly differently, don't they? and uh, that was why we hadn't come before. Just as a, a, an overview, just being back here and seeing the grandstand, seeing the track, does it, does it just evoke those magical memories of those, those two days in the Oaks in, in 2008 and 2013? Yeah, it does actually, you know. I mean, I couldn't tell you where, where, I, where I watched talent from, but I could tell you exactly where I stood when Lockyer won. And... Uh, yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, look here more than anything else because um, it changed our lives, you know. And so it does. You know, I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge advocate of Epsom. Um, advocate's probably not the right word, but I'm a huge fan of Epsom. And uh, 
I love running horses here. So with that in mind, because you've won two Oaks, do, do the Epsom Classics still hold as much sort of luster as they as they did when when you first became aware of them? For every flat trainer in Europe, certainly, I would say um, they are the two most important races over the year. We only get one chance at it. And the track's unique and uh, it's tough getting them ready for this time of year with backward horses. Um, you're testing the precocity of the breed, you're testing everything. And uh, yeah, it is, it is the ultimate test. When you bought or when you watched Westover this morning, are you satisfied by what you've seen today? Yeah, he came round there. Well, actually, you know, in many ways, I, I, I'm not sure I was expecting any more than, than he achieved today. You know, the, he, what he achieved today was everything I hoped for, really. You know, he, he went, he relaxed, he came down the hill well, uh, he finished out well, um, galloped through the line strongly. I, you know, there really wasn't anything there was not there, what was not to like you know it was a, it was absolutely what we hoped for is is he sort of is he still learning his trade learning his craft based on what you saw the the ability is definitely there from Sandad. is he still sort of fine tuning his art as a racehorse well he, you know he's enormous you know you yeah. saw him he's a big fellow and uh he's the sort of horse that once he does everything once he's done something once then he realizes what's required and that was part of the reason for bringing him here i felt that you know he would really benefit mentally from the from the experience um in a way that another run wouldn't necessarily have helped him now <laughs> i could be entirely wrong about that we won't know till saturday afternoon will we but uh, uh you know, I was happy with what happened today. Weather-wise, would you have a, a particular preference between now and a week Saturday? Not really, not really. I mean, Andrew Cooper does a fine job on the ground here mm. and it's never rattling quick. Um, that, that inevitably helps us. Big horse, you know, he's got quite a round action, as you can see. Mm. He, you know, he's handled soft ground. I think ground's that important to him, funnily enough, you know. I, um, you know, I think it's more about whether he handles the everything else. I'm fascinated to know because when you bought Look Here Here, Look Here Here, um, back in 08, she, she was a big price. And of course, talent when she won, she was a big price. You did have Secret Gesture in the race who was who was shorter and still ran very well. I mean, do you come here with with confidence, expectation? How do you how do you approach a, a classic here? Because in any normal year, non-COVID, of course, you're going to be dealing with a huge crowd, the fanfare, everything that comes with it. Is it is it possible to get any more than just hopeful of something big? <laughs> well, look, look here. Um, I'd only had two starts yeah. when she won, and she arrived in the p paddock, um, sweating like an Eskimo in a microwave, she was awash, but she dried out through the preliminaries, you know, she, she, she cooled out through, through, uh, through saddling and, and walking around, and by the time she got to the start, she was completely dry. I think I remember saying to her owner, listen, if we're in the first six, she's run a really good race. So I never really expected her to win. Uh, but she just loved the place. Mm. She was brilliant here. Yeah. You know, she was slightly unfortunate not to win the Coronation Cup 12 months later um, when she was beaten two noses. So she was, a, she was a much better filly here than anywhere else. Talent, oh, talent could, couldn't live with secret gesture at home. Mm. That's partly her. She only did enough mm. talent. Um, she really thrived off the pretty Polly. And I remember our, our head man, Adam Kite, saying, this filly's going gangbusters, you know. I'm sure she's going to run a race. But we were so um, smitten with Secret Gesture's work <laughs> that, that uh, it, was, it was inconceivable for us to believe that she, it, they were finished that way around. So there you go. Roger Verin has just seen Eden gallop here as, as part of the, the morning ahead of the derby. Satisfied with what you've seen, Roger? 
Very. I mean, uh, just seen it once, you know, sort of live through my binoculars, but it looked nice and smooth to me. I think more importantly, you know, than what I thought is what David thought he was on the horse and David was delighted with him, said he felt very balanced, switched his leads at the right moments and, um, you know, it wasn't... Uh, wasn't a strong work. It was just a nice, uh, nice bridle work, uh, hand work, and uh, horse looked to move well, enjoy himself, and um, you know, just just what we wanted out of a day, really. How much can you you learn when they go the pace they do around here? Is it is it about balance as much as anything, and and the, the idiosyncrasies of this track? A little bit, yeah. It gives them a, a, a cipher, I suppose, which mm. um, you know, I think as long as the ground is good and, and they don't go too hard, doesn't do them any harm. Um, it's about getting a day out as well. You know, he wouldn't have run since uh, the Guineas, and it fits nicely into our programme of where we've got him since the Guineas. And um, you know, we used used the same day for Kingston Hill when Kingston Hill came out of the Guineas and ran so well in the in the Derby. So, you know, the day uh, for a horse like Eden for what he's done this year fit very well into our programme. It doesn't fit every horse's programme. You know, the Derby trials are a bit later, and if you for example, last year we won the Lingfield Derby trial with Third Realm. Yes. Didn't quite fit to come here so soon and gallop round Epsom. But I think for for where we've we've got Eden um, post Guineas, um, it it, uh, it fit lovely into his programme coming here today. Well, as much as anything, the, the fact that he won the field and then ran in the Guineas, obviously on your doorstep, both of them. Would this be the furthest he's travelled in a in a while as well? Furthest he's travelled since I got him beat twice at Newcastle in the winter. So. That's obviously a long way, isn't it, up up north? So you know, look, he's he's used to travelling and, and staying, yeah. and uh, uh, but um, no, I mean the whole day out day out does doing good. You know, that's often the, the idea of a race course gallop. It's not to it's not to sort of you know um, it's not all about the work. It's yeah. about the, the day away and uh, just getting their blood up a little bit more than you would at home on the gallops. Is he exciting you in the same way Kingston Hill did ahead of? the 2014 derby when he ran that huge race to be second to Australia I think I think he is you know he, he bolted up in a field and um, he maybe pick holes in that form but the, the visual impression he gave us that day was that of a very good horse and I thought he looked a good horse that day and in the 2000 guineas he confirmed he was a good horse I thought to finish fourth behind um, Caribus native trail in Luxembourg and not a long way behind them you know is solid form one of the best races run this year yeah. did that race leave you dreaming of Epsom well it left us dreaming of Epsom or the jockey club yeah. and you know while we're talking about Epsom because we're here at Epsom he is in both derbies mm. and I should think he'll be left in both derbies you know going into next week and um, it might be that a, a final decision on which derby he participates in is, is a late decision I have to obviously see how the horse comes out of this work and I'll speak uh, with Prince Faisal and um, you know we'll, we'll make a decision at some point but it, it is worth noting um, for punters that uh, he, he does have both engagements yes. and we're not settled on one over the other just yet. Would, would the 10 or the 12, would either of them concern you? Do you think he's just that good a horse that's, that's durable and versatile enough to cope with either test whether it's France or Epsom? Well I think the further you go into the unknown um, the more perhaps unsure you are yes. and you'd have to say that the 12 furlongs would not concern me, but be more of a question mark mm. than the 10 furlongs. You know, I thought he won the field in stakes like a 10 furlong horse and most likely, um, you know, you could have made a case of running him in the Dante, not the 2,000 guineas, but I was, the way he ran him the 2,000 guineas, I was delighted that we went that way. And, um, you know, for sure he would get 10 furlongs well. You know, would he get 12 furlongs if we came to Epsom? That would be a question mark, but he'd have to, have to answer on the day. And I don't think there's any way of telling beforehand whether he would or not. And this weekend, um, it's going to be a special one of course, the Platinum Jubilee, but with Kingston Hill running so well as he did and, and of course the Coronation Cup success as well in there, uh, how important in your, your training career has this weekend at Epsom been over the years? Yeah, it's been one of our, one of our best really. It was um, sort of a bittersweet moment when Kingston Hill ran so well and yet didn't quite uh, you know, come home in front, uh, but that was a great experience. and. Um, you know, we had postponed win, yeah. win the Coronation Cup, of course, uh, you know, in breathtaking fashion, which was a big thrill. And then, and then Defoe mm. uh, winning it, um, you know, a couple of years later, maybe. Um, a very dramatic race it was as well, dramatic finish as he, as he got there. Yeah, it was a great race and maybe not, not so expected. But, uh, no, we've had some great days here, Derby weekend. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can enjoy a few more. 
Simon, you've brought West Wind Blows down here. Very much a, a blank canvas or an unknown quantity in a lot of ways. What have you learnt about him this morning? Well, the, the whole point about coming here was to give him a little bit of match practice over the track. Um, he's acquitted himself very well. He, he is short on experience, which obviously is not ideal, but um, going into the derby, we needed to give him as much experience of Epsom as we possibly could. I think he's worked very nicely this morning and uh, did everything that we wanted him to do. Galloped out very strongly. He came down the hill on his, on his correct leg. He, he, he wasn't keen. He, he finished off very nicely and I think we're all set to go. We haven't seen much of him on the track so far, but what he has done on the track, on the, the, the limited evidence, is it, has it been in keeping with the, well, the view and the, the, the sort of faith that you hold in him? Yes, very much so. I mean, he's a horse that has a superb pedigree. Yes. You know, he's by a champion out of a French Oaks winner. Um, what we do know is that he's going to stay the mile and a half very well, and he's going to need to have to do that in the derby. He's a horse that is light on racing simply because he got loose at Newbury. Otherwise, he would have run there and run back at Lingfield, and we couldn't do that. We had to go to plan B. What so, actually happened that day at Newbury? Well, I think what happened was that he sort of half sort of reared up and sort of wheeled round a bit. Mm. Ryan came off him and then unfortunately the stalls, the man holding him tripped over the stall handler. Right. So that's how he got loose. That was very unfortunate. So it's not uh, temperament necessarily doesn't worry you when it comes to, to bringing him here for the big day? Well, I think, I think obviously we've got to try and keep the lid on him as much as possible. He can get himself a little bit warm and overexcited so the prelims are going to be absolutely essential for this horse but we're going to give him as much sort of pre-race experience as we can with uh, you know in Newmarket now and and just try and prepare him yes. for the big day as well, well as we can. And for all that the derby is the derby there's only one crack at it um, this will only be the third start so with that in mind is he still a horse that you've got big aspirations long term for? Definitely definitely he's very much a a cult for the future. Whatever we see on Derby Day, he's he's got the potential to, to develop into a really exciting cult at you know the second half of the season and for next year as well. Uh, Andrew, such a massive couple of days coming up here. Um, they're etched in the diary, of course they are each and every year. How are things at the moment building up to well the classic couple of days? Well, I think from a track perspective, Nick, I think we're in a pretty good place, you know, with just under a fortnight to go. After what has been a pretty challenging spring, I have to say, you know, but mainly lack of rainfall has been the, the big issue for the probably the country as a whole, but certainly in the southeast. I mean, in April, we, we've measured about 15 millimetres of rain here, which is way, way below what we'd normally see. And in May, we've seen about 17 so far, and uh, seven millimetres of that actually was last Friday, Friday afternoon. So it, it, it's, it's been a really hard spring for the team, but I think from a, from a track perspective, with, uh, you know, as I say, just under a fortnight to go, I, th I think and hope we're in a good place. With that in mind, with the horses that worked here this morning, what would... For the going description on the day, what would that have been? Well, I think it's. It, I walked in at uh, six o'clock this morning, and I thought good would be the first word. It certainly had its slower places. I thought coming down the hill, um, and just the odd, very odd spot, just perhaps just on the slightly quicker side of good. But I think I'd ignore if I was. I'd have either called it good or good to soft in good, good to soft in places. I think, I th and I think the feedback from the jockeys has been it's ridden as sort of the slow side of good, nice, nice ground to sort of work a horse on. How's the forecast sort of shaping up then over the next week and a half? I'm not seeing a great deal of rain at the moment. Is is my take on things? Uh, showery activity perhaps until the middle part of this week, uh, but then from Thursday onwards things I'm sort of looking at or, or put some trust in show generally dry not particularly hot I think with you know the most sort of indications for next week which is going to be key whatever the weather's done before it's what happens in that last five six days is key always is look sort of low 20s dry which which in a way I have to say from from a for the clerk's perspective is better than having risks of showers, thunderstorms and whatever, yeah. sometime, somewhere in the forecast, which just sort of inhibits your sort of thinking and strategy and whatever. And Sandown last week would have been a good example of that.